ones. Oh, that's my marks. Those black marks are my marks. Nice. What is going on, guys? My name is Lexus Z. Welcome back to the channel. First and foremost, thank you so much for all the comments. Thank you so much for all the likes. Thank you so much for all the views on all my videos, guys. You're the reason I do what I do. You're the reason I spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on all these cars. It's not for YouTube. YouTube ain't paying me nothing, but I do it just for fun, guys. So as long as you keep watching, I'm gonna keep posting, and we're about to have a lot of fun this year. But anyways, today we are here to talk about my 2021 Dodge Charger Wide Body Red Eye. It is the most stupidest, the most wildest car I've ever owned. Owned. Whoa, 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 and it's a four-door sedan, and I'm going to be honest with you guys, I'm a Mopar guy, everybody knows that, I just picked up a new Ram TRX, so if you want to see that video, there's a link in the description, click on it after this one, and I promise you, you'll love it, because that thing is more wilder than this, almost, but, you know, being a Mopar guy, there's a lot of things, a ton of things that I love about this car, but honestly, there's quite a bit of things I dislike as well, and I'm not being picky, man, but for $90,000, the things that are on my list should not be an issue, should not be even something that should be ever brought up but it is what it is it's, it's a mopar life so i'm kind of used to it but without further ado guys let's get this video going all right guys so the way i'm going to do this video is i'm going to start off by talking about all the specs on the dodge charger red eye um we'll go over the little sticker addendum that they give you and then of course we'll talk about the five things i like five things i don't like and then of course we'll get this thing on the road and we're going to rip it and it does not take much to be a lunatic or a hoonigan in this four-door sedan and i gotta admit this sucker gets a lot of views man i honestly never thought it would be this popular but uh, a lot of people stare at this car so if you're looking for one of these man without a doubt grab one all right so let's talk about this car real quick this is a 2021 dodge charger wide body red eye and when i say wide body i mean wide body look at the fender sticking out this isn't just some little attachment this thing looks so freaking aggressive and there's the little red eye of course and the emblem so you know what you're facing with and why you should mess with this car but it is a huge huge improvement from the hellcat in many ways well at least from the one i owned i had a 2016 dodge charger hellcat it was pushing about 800 wheel horsepower but it was it was definitely not wide body this is a new thing i think that just came out i want to say in the 18s for the challenger and uh, 20s for the uh, chargers but um let's look at the addendum as well let's talk about the sticker because i actually have a question for you guys okay so we have a 2021 dodge charger hellcat red-eyed wide body <laughs> that's a long sentence to say base price of pretty much seventy thousand dollars for this car the only options i really got on this thing was well of course it comes with the uh, 2bz package which is the red eye gives you the bigger blower gives you the 11 inch carbon black lightweight wheels which is stupid i mean 11 inch wheels on the fronts and on the backs that is the biggest most deepest wheel you can put on this thing wrapped around with 305 i think it's pirelli's all around so there's no traction whatsoever but of course it does look pretty good with those 20s on there um and then the options that it does come with at least this one is not much um you got the harman kardon audio group 19 uh, carbon speakers with surround sound and you got the amplifier and then of course you got the uh, black brake calipers so that's the only two options that i got now here's what i want to talk about to you guys so it says it's got 19 speakers harman kardon system and let's count all the speakers in this car one there usually there's another one here but this is just a sticker there's like or a little uh, emblem there's no speaker here so you got one you got two three in the center four five in that door then you come around here to the back you got five uh six in the other door of course and then nothing in the back how is six adding up to 19 and where's the amp as well and usually with harman kardon don't you get like a subwoofer in the back as well in the trunk usually you got it in here you wouldn't have a spare you'd have a, a subwoofer in here if i'm not mistaken there's no subwoofer there's nothing in this car so please somebody tell me how there's supposed to be 19 speakers in this car i even checked the vin number yeah no it matches so i mean this car is the car that i bought but yet i don't know and i'm actually going to call the dealership after this because i would love for somebody else to count the speakers <laughs> anyways let's talk about the five things i do like about this car and quite honestly it's not hard to come up with those let's start with the most most obvious of all power really dude power let's just i mean that's so apparent 797 horsepower at crank what makes this one different than the hellcat and of course that is the bigger blower that they put on these red eyes it even got a little red eye uh, symbol in the eye here which is so sick but this blower is a 2.7 liter instead of being a 2.4 that you get on the hellcats of course already got a green belt i think the pulley is the same if i'm not mistaken so because you got a bigger blower you're pushing more air into the engine which means you can of course push out a little more power our stock which is awesome you're talking almost 90 horsepower more which is a big difference and of course it is noticeable from driving a stock hellcat so it's oh my god the transmission of course is the same you still got an eight speed dude look at that 
I mean, how scary is that look? 797 horsepower, zero to 60, if I'm not mistaken, is like 3.6 seconds, which is super strong. And the reason it's not faster than that is because you honestly have a traction issue. You have a big traction issue. Even with these 305s in the rear, the first three gears are useless. The first four gears are useless. I mean, if you really, I don't even know, launch control hasn't been opened up yet. It opens up 500 miles, but honestly, I know this is gonna be pointless unless I put some radials on there, which I have at the house and I uh, got some four stars coming in as well so some beadlock like wheels um it's gonna be sick but here's the thing zero to 60 in 3.6 seconds or 3.5 seconds a quarter in 10 six that's strong why because once it gets traction once this massive 4500 pound beast gets traction it's gone like it's there's no issues with it like top end having power because that power outweighs the weight of the vehicle so the power to weight is it's decent it definitely is decent but once it gets traction guys there's no issues with this thing being able to hang on with some uh, high horsepower cars and that's why it makes it really fun for uh, road racing and stuff like that so of course we'll be we'll be using and abusing this car very soon but like i said power not an issue of course number one on anybody's list against this car and the number two on my list and let's start this bad boy up God. the way the car like shakes when you start it oh dude it's like it's, it's like waking up a dragon man it's just ready to go it's it's oh dude the brutal excel uh, we'll talk about that later when we get on the road but anyways number two on my list is the comfort any mopar any ram any chrysler product period is always comfortable always just overdone overkill with just how comfortable these seats are super soft like you're talking just oh the amount of padding on it it's amazing like everywhere and the cool thing is they don't wear out as fast as other brands that i've seen like 50 100 000 miles you get a little bit of creases and wrinkles in the leather but it, it's not really like deteriorating or ripping or cracking really hard like other brands are i mean you could take it on five to ten hour drives and your back ain't killing you you're, you're just comfortable that's what i love about it comfort is definitely there you got the heated seats in the back the ram trx got cool seats in the back too so you got to watch that video it's it's such a sick truck but i do love it i love the comfort now when it comes to the interior we'll, we'll talk about that because that's on the dislike page for a lot of reasons and a lot of you will agree with me but anyways let's talk about number three all right number three on my list is the exterior looks not the interior exterior looks guys for so many so many apparent reasons and i can't get over it like seriously i'm a big fan of wide body vehicles not a big fan of wide body that's done by the people themselves or by companies aftermarket because it never looks as good as it does from factory but geez dude i mean look at that that is the most sickest sickest wide body vehicle i've ever seen always big a big fan of them even when i seen scott packs with the wide bodies the way that flows like this is actually i'm guessing it's a one-piece bumper because i'm not seeing the crease there or like an attachment this of course is added onto the fender but it's done so well that you can't really tell like yes there's aftermarket wide body fender flares you can put on and golly they look horrendous but this no offense to anybody that did it but this is just so much better from factory guys and now you know if we didn't have that to fit 305s they would always stick out quite a bit i mean you're talking a good inch and a half and it's always noticeable but with this it flows and now you can actually fit 11 inch wheels in the rear and in the front which is huge guys look at the concave wheels how deep that goes in to the actual wheel itself i think the offset i mean uh, i don't remember what the offset is but i love it the front and the rear is just so wide it gives it such an aggressive stance and because the wider wheelbase and the bigger tires in the front and rear this sucker actually hooks now of course it's not going to keep up with an all-wheel drive vehicle and of course the weight catches up to it but from my 16 hellcat this is such a big improvement and it's very noticeable when you're coming on the ramp or off ramp on the exit somewhere or you're giving it gas around the corner you're not as nervous about losing it and of course course if you match the gas pedal you're going to lose it that's just it don't matter what tires you put on 800 horsepower is 800 horsepower but even the way that they did the uh front little uh bumper adjustment here where now you have a whole inlet for the intake itself that is such a genius move and then of course the hood is a lot different as well it's more aggressive of course the red eye hood um i, I love it and it's all functional this ain't some just cheap little things they put on here just to give it looks it's actually functional you can see inside underneath the hood on both sides i love the vents on the side for the uh cooling system i think for the oil coolers and the intercooler or vice versa but i don't know i just love it now the only thing i wish they would have done is added a little more difference between a hellcat and a red eye besides just a little red eye on the emblem it's just a little too subtle for me and when you're spending you know 20 grand more for a car i wish it would say something and i'm not talking about the massive stickers they put on the back of the fenders or back quarter panel and that's nothing like that let's not let's not push it that far but i don't know make it stand out a little
little more different than just uh you know just a little emblem that's it so that way when you're driving by somebody knows that hey this sucker got 800 horsepower not 700 not that 700 is not enough i mean 400 is enough on these cars but this is just oh man i can't wait to drive it all right guys number four on my list and <laughs> some of you are just gonna trash me for this one but number four is actually the cargo space in this car <laughs> i'm sorry what did you say yeah I, I i didn't stutter i did say cargo space why because you are talking about a four-door sedan family size sedan and yes i've had two car seats in here and i had a stroller in the back of my charger in the trunk itself why because this sucker's got space i mean when you're talking about a four-door car i don't care what kind of motors in it it should be actually usable for a full family to go somewhere on the trip and i gotta say this thing is more than capable of taking not just one stroller but a stroller probably a few freaking bags full of uh, stuff for a vacation trip you even got a little hanger here for clothes i guess i don't know but this thing is huge and the back space but i'm 6'3 and my seat in the front of course is well i push it all the way back and i'm still comfortable like leg space i'm still good here but like i said i mean look how far i moved the front seat so that's understandable but i'm still comfortable like i'm not touching the roof so that's good i'm actually comfortable yes i am kind of in the back window though but it's not bad for a four-door sedan i'm actually quite happy with this i'm still searching for the speakers though because i don't see them anywhere i really feel like i got ripped off i don't think i have harman Kardon. i think they just slapped the stickers on because they realized they screwed up but anyways a lot of space in the car all right and the last thing on my list of things that i like and probably should have been like number two instead of number five is how easy and how cheap it is to modify the hellcats or more power platform period what do i mean by that let me put it to you this way for four to five thousand dollars on this hellcat red eye you can get injectors pulley intake and tuning all that done and you'll be about 800 wheel horsepower to get to 800 wheel horsepower on the gtr don't get me started man you're talking 20 to thirty thousand dollars if not more to get for seven thousand bucks so extra three thousand dollars you can get a flex fuel kit on here you can get the drive shaft you can get the radials and everything else and you'll be at 850 wheel and that'll be a fully track prepped car for seven thousand dollars that's unheard of guys seven thousand dollars on my gtr got me a uh, flex fuel kit intake down pipes exhaust um tuning and got me to 630 wheel that's it but yes it was on all-wheel drive car but 530 on a gtr or 630 on the gtr is pretty much the same as 850 on this for a third of the price so it's just it's so easy to mod these cars it's so friendly for modding that's why a lot of people grab them yes there's a lot of channels with hellcats for that reason that's why i grabbed two of them and actually the next video i'm posting is we'll be putting on a leg maker intake on this thing which literally takes like five to ten maybe 15 minutes all we have to do is take off the intake pipe and the filter slap the new one on doesn't really increase the horsepower but it does increase of course the sound the whine of the supercharger the 2.7 liter supercharger which is huge it's a lot bigger than the hellcat hellcat has a 2.4 liter so you've got a lot more air coming through a lot of more air getting pushed into the motor which of course is why you have 797 but i mean you can do easily swap out the pulleys we are going to be doing the drive shaft as well so i have a lot of parts sitting at the house i already got a uh, four inch dss drive shaft i got the ford star uh beadlock wheels coming i got the radio tires and of course i got the intake and a few other things as well little cosmetic changes because i want this thing to stick out i want it to be a little different than everybody else's it's a red eye already is a little different but it's not enough to really make it pop where it's like hey that's lexus see that's that channel that does stupid and crazy stuff with cars and <laughs> he's always got a new car that he's driving so if you like what you're seeing guys by the way drop a like drop a comment drop a subscription it will mean the world to me like i said whoever just joined whoever's watching this video you came at a perfect timing because we're about to modify this car we're about to modify the ram trx we're trying to get both cars to a thousand horsepower and i don't think it'll be that hard to be honest with you guys and we're so close to four thousand subscribers anyways guys let's talk about the five things i dislike about the car and they really they really push my buttons man those dislikes are real dislikes wait till you hear them all right guys number one on my dislike list is uh i'm telling you everybody's gonna agree whoever had a mopar or had a charger or anything like that is just how outdated this interior is i mean come on my 16 charger had the same exact interior nothing has changed all the buttons exactly the same the screen is eight inches which five years ago was yeah that was the big new thing now in 2021 that is the most let me show it to you guys god it pisses me off let me start this car up for you guys and that looks sick i'm not gonna lie but i mean still the smallest little screen i've ever seen none of the gauges are digital of course this screen is eight inches it's just so freaking small this looks so outdated you got this massive little panel here for just a few buttons imagine if this was actually a touch screen and imagine if this was like a flat screen that's what everybody's going to everything needs to be really flush in the cars these days and that's just like the panels and the plastic pieces kind of going in like that it's just so old school i mean 2014 is when this charger came out this hasn't changed whatsoever the only thing 
thing that really changes a little bit here with the way the shifter is that's about it but this steering wheel is the same the cool thing about this is this lights up right now at night i'm gonna post a picture of it right now but like everything the door is exactly the same the buttons are the same the seats are exactly the same nothing has really changed not in the back not in the front it's just upsetting man like i mean this car sticker for eighty five thousand dollars, and nothing looks different than from a, a v6 charger yes yeah, so all my friends are going to be bashing me because that's the first thing they said was like oh cool you just got another charger i was like no 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 this is a red eye this is a red eye 800 horsepower like oh that's cool so what's different uh the blower oh okay what about interior nothing it there's, there's nothing different it's got cool seats and a remote start Woo! since 2014 <laughs> all right and since we're on the interior of this car might as well talk about the number two on this list as well and that's got to be the gas mileage all right alex really so you, you bought a, a 80 90 thousand dollar car and you're going to complain about the gas mileage yeah yeah because uh if they say <laughs> on this freaking sticker and this is literally the repeat of the ram trx because it said it was supposed to get 14 miles a gallon on the highway i was getting nine i could barely hit 10 if i was doing like below 60 miles per hour on the highway so <laughs> that's not even safe but let me show you this so right now and this is literally i drive on the highway to work and it's showing that i'm averaging 13 what is it like 13.3 come on 13.3 miles a gallon right that's it on highway driving this thing advertises on the highway 21 21 miles a gallon i'm barely getting the city miles per gallon and, you're, and somehow it's supposed to be almost 10 miles per gallon more than that like this is this is complete bs i don't know where to get these numbers from guys but i have not been able to like literally cruising on the car i can't get it to 15 i've never even seen 15 and i've been driving it for about 200 miles now so this miles per gallon is just a complete bs if they told you from the start like hey you know it's it's actually gonna be like 14 miles a gallon on the highway yes the guys guzzler tax will probably be substantially more but at least it's the truth uh, 20s that, that's there's no way that has to be like the most flattest earth in the whole world and you can only go 60 miles per hour because this sucker just sucks up fuel like there's no time it, it, it eats it it eats it and you can see the gas meter just just dropping that gas drops quick but yeah uh moss per gallon kind of sort of been lied to about that as well on top of the Harman garden speakers all right and number three on my list and guys i i get it this is a performance vehicle i understand this is probably a normal thing but it's the the brake dust right i have 206 miles right now on the car 11 inch wheels i haven't washed them yet but look at this like literally i'm about to wash it as soon as we get home but look at this just the whole coating of brake dust this whole wheel is covered and good luck trying to wash an 11 inch wide wheel and getting all that brake dust off without it like just packing up and being all crusty and stuff but that's horrible like this is just on the whole wheel this is sad man like you shouldn't be dropping off that much brake dust i know it's got bigger rotors in there but the back as well is well not so i well, know that's a lot that's that's quite a bit it's just painful to watch man my track all got the same issue yes i know we're talking about a 4500 pound boat but still brake dust is like huge you really got to ceramic coat these wheels in this car as soon as you get it that way you can kind of easier get um the brake dust off it just washes and rinses off but as soon as i'm done here i got to go to the auto parts store and get some sort of a cleaner like a brake dust cleaner that won't really ruin these wheels as well like a mopar car with carbon wheels or carbon light wheels whatever they call them that's pretty bad hey man i'm not gonna lie number four is well just the fit and finish of this car as well it's it's painful to watch here's what i mean by that right so you spend eighty four thousand dollars. you go to the dealership you're picking this sucker up man you're like dude that looks pretty sick man i mean check out that car that front end is mean but geez dude you can fit like two quarters in that hole right there man but wait a minute you can't even slide a piece of paper through here though look at the freaking size look at the finish and fit of this car look how massive this wide opening is here and then this one is just like you can't even slide your finger or nail in there and it goes all the way through the car like that like doors here that's a massive hole massive hole here as well same with the hood but then like on the bumpers you can barely barely see any sort of like crack through it at all whatsoever it's just i don't know it it bothers me like this car should be so tight on these fits and and just look a lot more presentable like i said the fit and finish is just i don't know I, it's never been good my charger was the same and my front bumper on my charger was a it, it's a black charger the front bumper what the paint didn't even match and that sucker never been an accident or anything but the color was it was just different so good thing this is a flat color so that smoke show gray really pops on this car so it doesn't show as much uh paint imperfections but the fit like it's just it's, it's on another level of just horrible <laughs> all right guys and number five on my list of the things i don't like and this one kind of sort of is, is also a big number five to be honest with you guys so anytime you buy a one of these 20 i think 2020 and newer you get you connect which is like an app on your phone so the cool thing about it is of course you i have my truck on here what you can do is you can lock unlock you can remote start you can cancel the remote start you can do the horns and lights on it so you can pretty much set the alarm off from anywhere in the world which is awesome don't get me wrong that way you wake up out of bed it's 20 degrees outside 
outside and you're like, man, screw it. I got 10 minutes before I get in the car. I'm just going to go ahead and remote start the car. And then by the time I get in, it's going to be warm. So you don't want to go in the kitchen or wherever and grab your keys and remote start it. You just want to be laying in bed, press the button, car starts, warms up, you're good to go. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to slide to the right to my charger. Then I'm going to press start. So of course, I'm going to ask for my pin. Excuse while I give you the pin. Just stare at that beautiful car there. And remote start request is in progress. So let's see how long it takes for this car to actually start. Two thousand years later <sighs> weather's really nice outside not a single cloud out there how you guys doing today yeah you, you enjoying your life everything's awesome anything new happening can't wait till i put the intake on this thing that's gonna be awesome man i can't wait oh, okay so a minute later that's just ridiculous. And that's me being close to the car. When I'm like starting it from, you know, let's say I'm at the, I don't know, at work and I want to start it and the car's parked at the parking lot. So let's say I'm over here at the grocery store and I'm walking to the car. I'm like, hey, I'm just going to click on the phone, start it while I'm checking out. That way by the time I get there, it'll be done. You walk up to the car and the car still hasn't started yet. It's, it's horrible. Like literally if the car is further than where I'm just standing next to it, it literally can take between a minute to two minutes to three minutes to start the thing. What's the point of a Uconnect where it's like, hey, remote start, hey, we'll make everything easy and, and just make your life simpler if it takes that long to start the car i mean imagine if you're standing there and you want to unlock it from your phone because like i don't know you lock the keys in the car so you're just going to be like standing for a minute or two staring out the door waiting for it to unlock so it's just i don't know it's like the most ridiculous thing ever so continuing talking about the uconnect let's go ahead and get inside the car as well because it just it gets better it just gets a lot better you're in the car and you want to go to the performance pages which let's see how long that takes to load wow it takes forever for things to load. Well, that's funny. Where is the performance page? It's supposed to be right here. That's supposed to say performance, by the way, guys. I'm not scripting this. That's weird. That's acting up already. But you want to get to the performance page. You're at the track. You just want to go ahead and get everything activated and going. And, well, yeah. Let's see how long that takes to pop up. It's just like the most slowest system ever and it's been around for what seven years since 2014 nothing has changed nothing has absolutely changed about it like it's still it's still slow i mean how many more complaints do you have to get from consumer before you actually go ahead and fix this thing it's so dumb i mean come on now wow still waiting that is ridiculous come on there we go well please there we go now it's loading performance pages so i don't even know what it was loading before it is like literally i'm not scripting this i'm not fast forwarding i'm not slowing the, the video down this is how happening in real time so you're already like oh crap man i'm about to be next one up uh the guy already roasted his tires he's lighting up he's about to take off i can't even activate this to go into performance page to turn anything on to see what the dyno sheet is showing you can't do anything man like by the time this actually does something you're right past already racing like you're already done it's your turn you're already done what you had to do and you're and you're ready to go so it's uh so upsetting man like look at that finally we're at the performance page so now you can see the engine of course you got the g-force gauges nothing has changed since 2014 or 2015 guys it's all been here uh home screen is here so you can kind of see your g-force the dyno of course so if i give it some gas you can see the power jump oh ooh, so impressive but the srt page is a little bit quicker so if we do press this now it pops it up up front so you can kind of see different drive modes of course that you can activate so 797 on auto for did custom which i have everything set up kind of like sort of track with suspension and all now the cool thing that i love about this car and whoever stuck around to see it I, I, you're gonna love it so crap well we gotta go back to the performance page oh please don't take forever you got something called the chiller what chiller does is it once you activate it it takes all the ac out of the vents nothing is blowing and it's actually recirculating it through the supercharger to cool off the intake air temperature which is exactly what you need so let's go back here and see what it's actually doing well it's still dropping it yeah there you go so now we're at 78 so it's dropping it by what six degrees already in the last 10 to 15 seconds that's, that's pretty impressive so the cooler the air you get the more power of course you can pull out of this car which is important when you're at the track and last season was like 95 degrees out there 100 degrees your car is not liking that you're not getting the full potential out of the car even with the 85 so with this now you're actually dropping the temperature 78 it just keeps going down which means the cooler the temp the more power you can push out of it so that is pretty pretty impressive you connect system not so impressive let's just be honest here it's horrible i i hate it man it's it hasn't it hasn't changed in six seven years which is dumb all right guys let's get this bad boy on the road this is the most fun part of this whole video so let's see what 797 uh looks like or sounds like in a four-door sedan you're driving blah 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 and mash holy mother Oh, geez, that was not a hundred. That was not a hundred. What is 100 kilometers? That's about it. So <laughs> that's 
Let's go! Let's freaking go! Whoa, 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 Oh, and traction controls. Oh, that's my marks. Those black marks are my marks. Nice! Oh, that's so sick. Oh, you will not smile this much in an all-wheel drive car unless it's like a thousand horsepower. <laughs> that's so stupid. I'm sorry. Sorry, truck. I didn't mean to cut you off. I'm sorry. I didn't cut you off, but you were. I know you're trying to merge. Oh, man, that's so fun. Oh, this is so much fun. Anyways, the goal of this car for me, like I said, is a thousand horsepower, at least at crank. I would love to get it to the wheels, but I know it's gonna require a transmission build for sure because 850 is really pushing it. Now, granted, it's gonna last two, three years still, even with abuse, but you are pushing the transmission. But it's just, from factory, this is such a reliable, like a combo i guess you can say reliable engine transmission combo axles are fine for 850 900 is when you start having issues with the axle so i'm not worried about that drive shaft drive shaft is always an issue my first one with 800 wheel snapped the drive shaft leaving a red light and like i said that drive shaft is at the house as well so we're just gonna have so much fun with this thing i'm super excited guys i can't stress that enough like a thousand horsepower and this thing we're gonna be we're gonna be racing some gtrs we're gonna be racing some vets i want to see what it does 4500 pounds it's 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 a lot of weight to pull around Yeah, 4,500 pounds is nothing in this car. Alrighty guys, and just like that, the review of the 2021 Dodge Charger, I guess Hellcat Red Eye Wide Body is over. I hope you enjoyed it. This thing is just completely wild. It's on a different level of just performance. It's it's past performance. It's just wild. Like there's no, there's no need for it to be this fast for a four-door Charger, for a four-door sedan, period. Nobody buys this car, says, hey, we'll take a lot of long road trips, so we're gonna get 800 horsepower car. <laughs> they don't do that, but I guess they had extra Red Eye engines laying around. I don't know what the whole point of this car is, but I love it. I really do. I'm happy they did it, quite honestly. And it's one of the best purchases I've ever made, guys. I truly, truly enjoy this beast. I can't wait to get it tinted. I can't wait to put all the performance parts on it. That is going to be the next few videos coming up. Guys, you're going to love the content on this channel. We have the Ram TRX going on the dyno as well. Actually, I'm recording that today. So that is going to go up really, really soon, guys. Thank you so much for all your support. Thank you so much for all the love and comments. And <laughs> I just love it. Like, literally, this is the reason I do this for you guys. This is the reason I have <laughs> all these car payments and all these fun toys, man. And if it wasn't for you guys, my life would be boring. So I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart, honestly. And I can't wait to enjoy this beast every single day when I uh, drive it to work or whatever. And I wish I got better gas mileage. But that's besides the point. Thank you guys so much for watching. Enjoy your lives. Enjoy your cars. Enjoy your trucks. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.